Construction materials can have a much bigger environmental impact than you might imagine. They can contribute to resource depletion, greenhouse gas emissions, species loss and pollution. In this introductory video, we will show just some of the ways you can reduce a typical home's environmental impact. We provide some general rules of thumb here, but there may be exceptions. Before we go into different materials, here are three important principles to remember. Reduce demand for new materials as the first step. For example, through smaller, space-efficient homes and reuse of construction materials. Secondly, choose materials that are fit for their purpose. The best material will depend on the application and may also depend on other issues like climate. Thirdly, think about the life cycle of the material. Where does it come from? What purpose does it need to serve? Where will it end up? Consider materials that come from sustainable sources and are durable, low maintenance and easy to reuse or recycle. Some common materials such as plasterboard, sheet metal, fibre cement cladding and engineered timber are already pretty low in environmental impact. For others, we'll now go through some of the ways you can reduce their environmental impact. For many homes, the slab is the most greenhouse gas intensive component. Manufacture of concrete results in high greenhouse gas emissions, particularly the Portland cement component. This doesn't mean you shouldn't use concrete. Materials with high thermal mass like concrete can be an important part of energy efficient design. But what you can do is use less greenhouse gas intensive concrete. Premixed products are available that replace some of the Portland cement with industrial waste products. Replacement rates of 20 to 30 percent are easily achievable. Aggregates can also be replaced with recycled materials. Some manufacturing plants may use waste for fuel. There may be minor performance changes to workability and shrinkage, so check the manufacturer's instructions for working with these products. There are also new concrete technologies coming onto the market, like geopolymers that use aluminium oxide instead of Portland cement, and magnesium oxide products that can actually absorb carbon dioxide. The two main issues are the environmental impact of the timber and its durability. Deforestation is a major contributor to biodiversity loss, one of Australia's biggest environmental problems. For this reason, it is important to avoid old growth and rainforest timbers, both imported and local. The Greenpeace Good Wood Guide gives you more information on sustainable timber selection. If you're using hardwood, make sure it's certified by a scheme that guarantees the timber was sustainably sourced. Recycled hardwood is also an option. Plantation pine is a good alternative to hardwood for many applications, but it's less durable and must be protected against termites and moisture. For pine framing, avoid condensation and use a breathable membrane when required. Check the moisture content of the framing before cladding. If using pine in ground, choose products treated with ACQ or copper azole. Avoid products containing arsenic and chrome, such as copper chrome arsenate. If using pine for above ground outdoor applications, such as external windows or doors, use low organic solvent protected pine. There are some alternatives to treated timber which look similar and are durable. This deck is made from recycled plastic mixed with sawdust. Timber and bamboo flooring can be low in environmental impact if from sustainable sources. Adhesives used in construction typically contain substances called volatile organic compounds, or VOCs. Site workers will be most exposed, but they can also affect the people living in the home, particularly in the early stages of occupation. When you're buying adhesives, do yourself a favour and choose products with low or ideally no VOC content. These are now commonly available in hardware stores. The same also goes for products which contain adhesives such as carpets, vinyl and joinery. E1 standard is good and E0 standard is the best available. Paints and varnishes generally contain VOCs. Choose low VOC paints, stains and varnishes. These are all readily available. Some paints have additional green credentials. For example, they might contain recycled content. Check the options with your supplier. 
with so many products available, there are some good decision support tools there to help you. EcoSpecify is a free to access Australian database of over 6,000 environmentally preferred construction materials. You can search by product type and see how products perform across a range of environmental and health criteria. There are also product labelling schemes such as GECA, the Goods Environmental Choice of Australia label. So, to sum up, reduce demand for materials. Choose materials that are fit for purpose. Think about the materials life cycle. For more information, download the fact sheet at tradesecrets.org.au.